Hello YouTube, my name is Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a third year medical student in Sweden and in this video I'm going to be talking about the biggest differences between the preclinical part of medical school and the clinical part of medical school. Medical school in Sweden is a lot different. It's a five and a half year long university degree that leads to a master's in medicine and then on top of that you need to do an 18 month internship to get your license to practice as a doctor. In the future, I'm gonna film a whole video about how medical school is structured in Sweden, I think. I'll leave a card for it up here. I'm in my last month of my third year, meaning I've started my clinical training about a month ago. So I thought this would be the perfect time to go through the differences of being at the hospital and sitting at home studying. So the first and probably biggest change that you'll notice is the change in your daily schedule. So before my day would look something like this. Um, I'm not a morning person, so I'd wake up at around 9 a.m., make breakfast, and then we'd usually have pre-recorded lectures because of COVID, or we'll do casework uh, with my group. In the afternoon, I'd do studying on my own, go to the gym and work out. And in the evening, I'd do a hobby or go to work. So now we have to be in the hospital at around 8 a.m., so that means I wake up at about 6.40 and I take the bus at 7.10 to go to the hospital. Then we'll um, read up on the patients and then we'll round till lunchtime. And then after lunch, we'll usually um, help the doctors with writing some notes. And then uh, we end the day at like 4 p.m. Um, I like to work out at the gym because we have a gym there. And then I take the bus home at uh, around 5 p.m. So it's a lot different being uh, gone the whole day. Um, before, when you'd study at home, you could, um, you know, do the dishes or I'll do a little bit of cleaning, uh, do laundry uh, during your breaks. But now you have to basically do that in the evening. I know it's like that for most people who work, but still it's a significant change. There's also another effect of spending the whole day in the hospital, and that is that it's way more fun now to study outside of the hospital because you don't do that the whole day um, alone in your room. It would also make a big difference during exam season because um, you'll be more eager to study because you're not so burnt out. So the second biggest difference is learning by doing. Before, I like to study at home. Um, I usually watch the lectures at like 1.5 to 2 times speed and then do flashcards on the most important topics. But now it's really emphasized that we should do the learning by doing in the hospital. And it's a lot easier to retain the information like pathology or how to come to a certain diagnosis, um, the labs, um, the treatment. When you have an actual case and a patient to study that you can relate it to rather than just reading it in a book. For me, this makes me remember things a lot easier and I think it will help me for the exams too. So the third biggest difference is that I get to see my classmates every day um, and of course also other people who work in the hospital. It's been a huge change to the last two years that were basically spent at home, uh, maybe going to the, gr to the gym or to the grocery store. And I've actually gotten to know my classmates, which you don't really do on Zoom because you're just there for the specific task or a presentation. Um, but in the hospital, we eat lunch together. Sometimes we're on rotation together. So it just leaves a lot more time to get to know each other. And I've been way less lonely uh, thanks to this. So the fourth biggest difference is something that we all recognize. It haunts us during our preclinical years and it also follow follows us through the training in hospital and it's uh, imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is something a lot of medical students struggle with. Um, it's when you feel like you're a fraud and you don't actually know anything and you're scared that someone is gonna find out that you're a fraud. Uh, for me, I thought it was gonna be way worse in the hospital, but it really hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. I know the answer to some questions and some not, but I don't get crucified for you know, answering wrong. And it's kind of nice to have a doctor who like quizzes you and pushes you a little bit rather than just, you know, sitting there and following the doctor in whatever they do. 
The fifth biggest reason is of course that you get to see patients. When we practiced examining patients, I remember I was super nervous. I was just thinking in my head about like what I have to do and I can't forget this, I can't forget that. So obviously the first few times when you interact with a patient, it's gonna be like a little bit fumbly, you're gonna be nervous and you probably forget things. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you become. And now after a couple of weeks, it's actually pretty fun to go and talk to the patients. Even if some of them are very sick, they're still like throw in a joke and like laugh around a bit. So, so let me know in the comments what your best way of dealing with imposter syndrome is. And remember to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video.